Laura A. Grace here, the author of Dear Author, Letters from a Bookish Fangirl, Team Lines of Poetry Collection, and Gathering Faith, my upcoming manga, which should be releasing soon. Happy Friday! I'm so excited you're here. I hope your week has just been absolutely fantastic. I am just so excited for this video, but before I start my video ramblings of, and fangirl ramblings I should say, of this book that I'm planning to featuring today, I wanted to mention that if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen, or hopefully seen, that my friend Maeve at Maeve Ever Reading are doing a manga photo challenge. It is Mermaid Manga Challenge, and we are just so excited for this. I know that May has already officially begun, but I just wanted to, or we, me and Maeve and I, just wanted to invite you to come join us. It's totally open all month. You don't have to do every every prompt every day if you don't feel comfortable. Just join in as you would like to and all of the prompts are open up to interpretation. So again with that we just want to extend an invitation and now I'll hop into this manga rambling video. I am so excited to be featuring the this manga. I'm featuring two titles in this manga series. They just the this recent one just the second one just released. I, I can speak today okay I can speak. It must be because it's Friday. But that series is Golden Japanesque. Oh my goodness. See, Little Mermaid vibes, or mermaid vibes, I should say. But yes, it is Golden Japanesque, a splendid Yokohama romance. And it is indeed a splendid, blooming, unfolding romance. I'm very, very excited to continue reading in this series. I wish we had volume three already. I read these back to back since the second one, like I said, just recently released from Yen Press. If you're not familiar with this title or what it's about, our main char character here, is, her name is Maria. This takes place in the Meiji era and she is sort of feared and even bullied, ridiculed from other people because she has blonde hair and blue eyes. Many times she has been told that she is a demon or she is like something that is just not good to look at pretty much. But then one day she comes across a young boy. His name is Rintaro, I believe his name is. And he sort of is a tease, to be honest. I don't think he's a bully, but he does like to tease. He ends up seeing her real hair color and thinks that she's not only very pretty, but that she's straight out of a fairy tale. And he sort of helps her to see that she is beautiful, despite that what people have told her, despite what her mother has told her, or not told her in this case, that she is beautiful. It is a very, very, very good story. I was actually sort of surprised it's not this light, fluffy romance, and I'm not really sure why I thought that maybe it was. Maybe because it says it's a splendid Yokohama romance, and I guess maybe I expected to be swept off my feet, which I was. But it, it deals with some heavier topics in this first one. I mean, we have prejudice, we have memories of seeing bullying, lack of self-confidence, loneliness. I mean, even Maria's mother, I was about to say family, but thankfully the grandmother is really loving and really encouraging. But her mother, like her mom gets worst mom of the year award. Like I really, really dislike her mom. In the second one, I didn't absolutely, like, loathe her, but, like, I still don't like her. Like, she's got a long way to go before she gets back in my good graces. She was never in them in the first place, but I'm just saying, just the way she treats Maria. I mean, I get that her mom is afraid and her mom is also facing prejudice, but you're the mom. You made the decision. You need to love your daughter despite of how she looks like. Anyway, that's all I'll say about that because that was really frustrating and really hard to see because Maria's self-confidence is so very low because of her mom. Like, yes, I feel like her confidence may not be the strongest with other outsiders, outside people, like out of her family picking on her and teasing her. But to have your own mother make you feel ashamed of how you look like is just wrong. It's just so wrong. Um, Maria's mom has that down pat and she should not have that down pat. So because of all of these things, you really have compassion for Maria. I mean, I believe like in just the opening page alone or like the opening, not the opening spread. Yeah, the opening page. I mean, look, you're already seeing her be an outsider. And the opening page says, I always look down when I walk holding my breath, counting pebbles so that no one would notice me until that day. Like, 
she should not feel that way. She should not feel that way. And especially, and I mean, it goes right into her mom, you know, sort of lecturing her about how she needs to act in front of other people. Oh, goodness, that was sort of a longer rant than I expected. But Maria herself is so very sweet. Despite the all she has gone through, I just love how you can see her heart on page and how that she still tries to honor and respect her mother and that she still cares for what her mom thinks about her despite how much it might hurt her. You get all of that, like I mentioned, that you're seeing on the opening page and then you meet Rintaro and they do not have the best meeting, we'll say it like that. And I feel like, yeah, it can make Rintaro almost look like a bully. I don't feel he personally was because I felt like he did not have mean intentions besides just picking on her because she's a girl. And I really love the development of their friendship as the story progresses. I thought that was very, very good because Rintaro, there's so much more to him than just this wealthy kid who likes to pick on girls. There is, was much deep depth to him. And you see that a lot in the second volume. You see that a lot too with Maria. You're gonna, anyway, we'll talk about this one in just a moment. There is, I will mention, an almost assault that does happen in this story, nothing graphic and thankfully nothing comes from that or happens but it was in here just as a like warning to readers the art was really 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 good let me find a non-spoiler page here oh here we go this is a good one it's just so pretty and i absolutely love how the mermaid aspect plays a role in this story and it plays a ro uh, role in the romance itself that was really, really good. And I thought it so fascinating. So there are notes at the back, which, you know, most manga have, but they have a few notes. And one of the things I thought very fascinating is many, what did it say? Let me make sure I get my facts straight before I go over here saying that it said this and that. All right, I can't find it, but I'm pretty sure that it was mentioned either in the manga, I guess not in the translation notes because I did not see them, but I'm pretty sure that it was mentioned somewhere that during that time, not many kids sort of went to school. Like they would go to elementary school, but if they didn't graduate from elementary school, then chances are they would not go to like, what is the equivalent of middle school and high school. And I was really surprised that by that because Maria spends a lot of time at home. And when it first like started, like I was first reading the manga, I was shocked because I was like, why isn't this girl in school? Like she needs to be at school because she goes to the library quite a bit. And because she's not at school and whatnot, you see a really big social class difference between Maria and Rintaro. And that also plays another role. And that goes in a lot into book two, which was equally as good as volume one. There was one time I admit that my like element or not element, but like my disbelief part was a little bit stretched. I was like, I really don't know about that. But I really enjoyed just how things unfolded in this volume. And it's interesting because since it's in the Meiji era that you have this blend of Japanese culture and Western culture because they play a game of truth or dare. And I was like, this seems so Western. <laughs> and so that was really, that was really fascinating having just these unique blends of the Japanese culture and the Western culture. And you see that too in the first volume as well. But I, I feel like it was a little bit more prominent in this volume due to things that take place and whatnot. And of course, you're still seeing a lot more fear from Maria's mom, total dislike on that part. But you really start seeing Maria's inner strength coming to shine and how it's affecting her talking to Rentaro. And there is such a good, like, incident situation that she, where she does something that was so unexpected, but I totally cheered. It was much deserved to the person that is on the end of this interaction. I can't say anything because it would be spoilers, but it was so good. And just the, like, progression of this manga was very, very excellent. And it goes where you're seeing more of that social class divide. And then you sort of have like a love rival that comes in. I didn't really like her, <laughs> uh, mainly too, because she's a rival, but she's just very, very rude. And I get jealousy makes you do dumb things occasionally or a lot of the time, but Maria has it so hard. Leave our main girl alone here. Do not bother her. Just move on, move away. 
And of course, Rentaro hands ev handles everything as best say with grace, but I don't know if that's the right word. He just handles things very interestingly, I guess would be the right word, maybe. <laughs> but he is very set on things when he comes to a conclusion and that's what he wants to do, that is what he's gonna do and nobody's gonna change his mind. Despite if Mar Maria might change, try and change his mind or somebody else, he's gonna do what he wants to do. And I feel like that is a very good thing for Maria to be around a person like that. And especially because he's very encouraging of Maria and like, I'm just so glad that he's in her life because she's not getting that kind of love and encouragement at home. I mean, her grandmother is, but her grandmother can only do so much, I feel like, when her mom is very overbearing. And again, I've already clarified that that is hard and that is just makes me really upset with her mom. I feel like the art is even better in the second volume. I mean, I love the art in volume one, but the way the designs were and the flow of the panels was so good, was so good. I mean, you have some really good close-up shots and these like title art pages, or if you wanna call them that, I'm not sure what the right name is, are so good, so good. And I didn't even show that. And I meant to talk about that in the first volume. I loved it. I loved it so much. Here's like a really good one. See, we're having that combination of this, the Japanese and Western culture and like almost all of the title pages are like that for the art on them. So, so beautiful. So beautiful. Here, I'll show you one more. Show you one more. Look at that. So the art is really, really good. And we finally see that, I think actually in the first one we did, but did see it, but Maria understands what the Little Mermaid is because there was definitely a misunderstanding when Rintaro calls her the Little Mermaid. And so I love just how we have this mermaid beachy theme on this cover. The purple is really pretty. And I didn't even realize that like me and the book are matching. I didn't do that on purpose. Yes. And so it's just a beautiful, beautiful cover. And I really, really enjoyed just volumes one and volumes two. I love how bold and brave Maria is. I think what makes this like series very good and just such a strong contender to be added to people's TBR piles is that this is not just a romance. Like, yes, there is a great romance, I think, that is unfolding between these two young people. But Maria, Maria is growing. And I love how she, I really feel, is going to have confidence in herself as the series progresses, that Rintaro is going to help her see that she is beautiful despite what her mom may tell her, despite what society may tell her, and that she can embrace her outer features and just even her the things in her heart, things that make up her personality, just who she is as an individual. I love that. And it gives a deeper depth to this series than just a beautiful and splendid romance. And of course, you have the class divide thing that's going on. And so I feel like that also adds another element of depth to everything because I love that characters that try and overcome that. A really good example of this or like another manga that's really good at this is The Heiress and the Chauffeur. I love this series. It made me cry at the end or tear up because she overcomes it. And I'm hoping the same thing for Maria. Love knows no bounds. And I love that theme. And I just love seeing characters. I said, just overcome what society may say that you can't cross this line because you're a family helper or you're a servant or, you know, you just can't be even in the same league because it's just so different, so to speak. I'm really, really excited to see where this series is going to go. This one was so good in that you see these leaps and bounds of bravery in Maria, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned that, but if this is how she's going to be continuing through this series, yes, I am so here for it. In the romance, it looks like it is about to unfold in like full bloom in the next volume. I don't remember when the next volume is supposed to be out, but I am definitely keeping my eye on this series. I'm definitely keeping an eye out on when volume three releases. This is just an excellent series that I highly recommend, especially if you like historical romance, if you're curious a little bit more about like the Meiji era and you want a main character that is growing in being more confident in herself, overcoming the odds, overcoming what society says that or dictates what she can and can't do. So many good things about this series. And then of course, I can't fail to mention the Little Mermaid vibes that play a 
I'd say a minor role in the story, but they're there and that they play a romance for, or a role in the romance for sure. And plus the cover is just so pretty. Both of them are just really, really gorgeous. It is just a beautiful series. I love Maria. I'm, I'm glad that Rintaro is still true to his teasing self, but I hope that he will just continue to encourage Maria to be her and believe in herself that she really is beautiful. Let me know if you enjoy reading historical romance, if you've read this series, or if there are other historical romance series that you've read. I would love to hear from you friends. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. Bye!